Hi there. My name is Taurus Baylog, and I'm one of the maintainers of the OpenMS project. Now, I've been told that you young folks out there really prefer watching videos to digging through reams and reams of documentation online, and so we decided to put together a training course we're calling OpenNMS 101. And this is the very first lesson in our OpenNMS 101 video series. It's called Introduction to OpenNMS. And the idea is to give you a little bit of the history of OpenNMS, um, to talk about the uh, application at a very high level, and to give you a glimpse of where we hope to take the product in the future. Now, OpenNMS was started way back in 1999. Um, we're not really sure when. I've been told July, but um, I wasn't involved. Um, but what we do know is that the very first code with the OpenNMS name was published on SourceForge on March 30th of the year 2000. So that was almost 17 years ago. Um, I was brought on board um, in 2001 by the company called Oculan, which was maintaining uh, OpenNMS at the time. Now, Oculan's business model was they had OpenNMS, which they used as a platform on which they built a network monitoring appliance. So they put some extra software on top of OpenNMS and they sold it as an appliance to small to medium businesses. Um, I was brought on board to build a business around the OpenNMS part of the thing, namely a services and support business. Now, I started on September 10th, 2001, which is very easy to remember because on September 11th, 2001, we sat around and watched TV like the rest of the world. So it wasn't exactly the best time to start a business, but, but we managed to do okay. Um, now, in May of 2002, a couple of things happened. Um, first of all, we released OpenNMS 1.0. Yay! We have a 1.0 release, so that was kind of cool. And the second thing was that Oculan, uh, the investors mainly of Oculan, decided that they were no longer interested in publishing anything under the open source model. Um, now, they own the copyright, and if you own the copyright, you're free to do what you want to with the code, and so it was all right for them to do that. Uh, of course, once something is published under an open source license, you can't unpublish it, but all future work was going to be proprietary and they weren't going to release the code to the public. Now, i had been doing network monitoring, network management since about 1988, and, and I saw the potential in OpenNMS. Um, a lot of network management is this, this writing of glue where you take uh, disparate um, best of breed products and you try to glue them together into a solution. And I said, hey, if we've got this platform that's open source, then all of us management geeks can get together and work on building something in uh, OpenNMS instead of having all this weird little pieces of code that's not very well maintained. So I went down to the CEO's office and I said, um, give me OpenNMS. And he kind of looked at his watch and he said, well, if you're off my payroll by Friday, um, we'll sprinkle water on you and you can be the OpenNMS guy. That was the easy part. Um, I don't know how many of you were married, but at the time, um, uh, I was pretty much the main breadwinner. So I went home to inform my wife that I'd quit my job and I was starting my own company to sell free software. And let's just say it didn't go over that well. I have since learned that um, this is what I've been informed is a we decision, not necessarily a me decision. But we're still together, um, so uh, I guess we lived through that. And um, I kept the project going until September of 2004, where I was able to convince a number of other people to join with me, and we formed the OpenNMS Group. And the OpenNMS Group is the commercial company behind the OpenNMS project and has been since September of 2004. Now, when I got started with my own business uh, back in 2002, everyone said, well, you need an elevator pitch. And I'm like, What's an elevator pitch? And they said, you need to be able to express in, a, in maybe 30 seconds or so uh, what your product is. So if you meet someone in an elevator and they say, hey, what's open in a mess? You have a certain amount of time. Uh, and so I came up with this phrase. Open in a mess is the world's first enterprise grade network management application platform developed under the open source model. Ding, doors open. Um, now, the problem is I'm a technical guy. I'm not a sales guy. I, I can't close a door, much less a deal. So, um, and I hate marketing speak. I hate, you know, we are the market leading, paradigm changing, synergy building, blah, 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 blah. So whenever I have a phrase like world's first, I want to explain it. So all of these phrases that we have highlighted on the slide, I'm going to break down. World's first. Um, Probably the grand old man of open source monitoring tools is uh, something called Nagios. 
It actually started off a life as Net Saint, and it started out in the uh, year 2000, in January of 2000. So um, we uh, were registered on SourceForge in March of 2000, so we're contemporaries. Um, so Net Saint um, uh, ran into a, a trademark issue, so they changed their name, and that became Nagios. Um, and there's a couple of other tools kind of from that era that are around. Um, so we've been around a while. And so when I say world's first, I basically mean we've been around a while. Um, enterprise grade. Now, a lot of open source tools start off life because some developer wants to scratch a particular itch, and he writes a quick piece of code to do that. And someone else finds it useful, and they start building upon that. And then they realize, ah, crap, it doesn't scale. So now we need to re rewrite it and rebuild it and stuff like that. OpenNMS started out as day one. We wanted to monitor tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of devices. And our ultimate goal is to basically be unlimited. Um, and so we, we, with that in mind, um, we set out to, to build OpenNMS to do that, which is one of the reasons it's one of the few tools that does scale. Uh, now, when you talk about scalability, it can mean many different things to different people. Um, and when I say scalability, I'm talking about, well, we can monitor discrete devices. We have customers monitoring over 100,000 discrete devices with one instance of OpenNMS. Uh, it can also be performance metrics. Uh, we have other customers who may not have as many devices, but they want to collect millions of data points on bandwidth. It could be temperature. It could be a ton of different things. And OpenNMS can handle these millions, of ultimately billions of metrics. Um, we also handle a lot of events per second, uh, several thousand events per second that we can run through. I think 30 or 40,000 is one of the messaging systems we looked at recently. Um, and then remote monitors. We have this ability to deploy a monitor remotely, and we have one customer that has a chain of retail stores, and they put an open NMS monitor in each one of those stores, and there's over 4,000 of them. So, enterprise grade. Now, this next phrase, application platform, this is probably the hardest um, concept to get across. Because when people think about applications, they might think about you know, World of Warcraft. So you download World of Warcraft, you start it up, and boom, you've got your game, you play it, and you don't expect to do anything. You're not going to modify it, you're just going to use it, you hope that uh, they fix bugs, but you're kind of done. Well, in the open source world, um, it's hard to build a business around just an application that just does one thing and you stick it out and it's done. Um, with OpenNMS, it's more of a platform. Yeah, it does a lot of stuff out of the box, but it really shines when you start to integrate it to other things. The analogy I like to use is my wife is an accountant, and she basically manages a $2 billion budget with Excel. Now, granted, she has tons of databases and other tracking tools, very expensive tools that, that integrate with this spreadsheet, but at the, at the bare bones, she's talking about using Excel to manage this budget. Now, um, if I went to Microsoft and bought a copy of Excel and then called them up and said, hey, sport guy, where's my budget? They laugh at me. You know, Excel is a tool, OpenNMS is a tool. Um, and to make it integrate with as many things as possible, we have tons of integration points. First of all, we have a full featured REST interface, relational state transfer. This is the ability to send information with a, with a call to a URL, either a get or a put to a URL. Um, if you go uh, to either the Apple uh, App Store or to the Google Play Store, you'll see that we have an OpenNMS app called Compass. Um, that app, which is visually striking and a, very easy to use, is all built on REST. There's no code outside, uh, there's no special Compass code in the OpenMS platform itself. Compass just uses REST calls, and we are continually improving our REST interface so that other applications can integrate with our platform. Um, built into OpenMS is a strong event management system, and so we were able to use the events and notifications to run external commands to do even further integrations. And we have a bunch of built-in integrations. We have an integration with Rancid, which is a configuration management tools for Cisco and Juniper uh, devices. Um, you can directly provision OpenNMS from your DNS. OpenNMS can check your DNS, see if there's changes, update itself. And we have a very strong trouble ticketing API for such things as Jira and, uh, and Remedy. And then finally, this idea of open source. Fully 100% of all of OpenNMS is available under an open source license. Uh, we don't do open core, we don't do open source, we, 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 there's not a piece that's extra that you have to pay for and, and under a proprietary license that you have to, uh, to get all the cool features. We just don't do that. Now the main application is published under the Afero GPL version 3. Um, 
but we do have pieces of it, like our integration with Newt's, which I'll talk about uh, toward the end of the presentation, um, that is published under a more permissive license, such as the Apache license. Now, if you type in open source network management into Google, um, we're usually the number one hit. Uh, it's, I think the same goes for open source network monitoring. Just so after the ads, you'll see right there that it says open NMS um, after, uh, after the ads. Uh, we don't do anything for that. Um, we've got a very diehard, uh, small but active community. And just for years, we've been the number one hit for that. Uh, I'm pretty proud of that. I assume we'll lose it someday because we're not really playing any SEO tricks. But um, I think just want to point that out. Now, what is network management? Now, there is a, uh, a definition of network management called FCAPS. And um, it stands for five main areas. It divides this realm of network management into fault management, which is your monitoring, what's going up and down, configuration, accounting, who's using what on the network, Performance measurement, you know, uh, what's going through my network, uh, what's the temperature of a router, things like that, um, and security. Um, and OpenNMS is really strong in the fault management and the performance measurement pieces. We do some configuration, some security, and a little bit of accounting. Um, now, there's another definition of network management, which is basically anything on the other side of a keyboard, um, which is kind of how my father views the network. He'll call me up and go, hey, the network's down. And I go, well, how do you know the network's down? And he says, well, I can't get to my email. And I'll say, well, can you get to Google? And I'm like, yeah, I can get to Google. Then it's not, it's not the network. It's some other issue. Which is why with OpenNMS, it says network management platform. But it, 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 it's the whole stack uh, from physical layer up through applications. And uh, the tool can monitor uh, pretty much all parts of that. Uh, but that's why we call it network management system. Because that's just a historic thing. But it's in the way my dad thinks of the network, not necessarily application management versus middleware versus database management, et cetera. Now, there are four main areas of OpenMS. Each one of these has a ton of nuances, et cetera, but we can divide OpenMS into four main areas. Uh, the first one is events. Uh, OpenMS is event-driven. I, I have an architecture slide at the end of this presentation which will kind of show you that the heart of OpenMS is a process that deals with events. Um, so we can generate our own internal events, we can receive events from external sources, we can uh, modify those events, change them, create notices, uh, have actions execute, uh, generate alarms, um, just tons of stuff with events. And we're going to spend the first several modules in this class talking about events. The next thing, which a lot of uh, uh, tools tend to skip, is this idea of provisioning. When I say provisioning, I mean provisioning the OpenNMS system. If I'm monitoring several hundred thousand devices, there's no way that an automated discovery thing is going to work. Uh, I mean, you can't just ping uh, huge uh, Class B network uh, uh, network ranges. Um, you, you most likely have to have some other inventory system that's external to OpenNMS that's doing all this, and then using our REST APIs, et cetera, you can provision OpenNMS to monitor exactly what's important and ignore what isn't. Um, now, back in the day, back in the uh, late 90s, uh, early 2000s when OpenMS was started, the big buzzword was SLA, service level uh, agreements, which was how available is your, your network. Um, and there really wasn't anything at the time that would do this. I mean, if you had HP OpenView Network Manager, you could generate some SMP values and you could ping, a, say, a web server, and you could say, well, Okay, I'm pinging the web server, and it's up, and I'm, I'm generating some pages, so I assume it's working. Uh, that's kind of like trying to measure the fuel economy in a car and saying, well, the fuel pump's rotating at such RPM, and uh, the exhaust manifold's at this temperature, etc. We just decided to do synthetic transactions. Let's drive the car a certain amount of distance and see how much fuel we used. And so um, a big part of OpenMS is this idea of service monitoring, of, of, of going out on the network, finding a network resource, and making sure it's responding uh, in a proper manner and in a timely fashion. And then finally, performance data collection. This is a biggie. Uh, let's collect you know, bandwidth statistics, temperatures, et cetera, all this stuff on the network. Now, there are two main OpenNMS versions. Um, the one you guys should probably play with first is called Horizon. Now, Horizon is kind of analogous to um, the Fedora project. It is a... a, a, a um, a version that we come out with very frequently. We have a major release about every four months. Uh, all the new cool stuff goes into Horizon. Um, 
one thing we struggle with at the OpenMS group, Open MS, the OpenMS group is, um, is the company behind OpenMS, and we have a bizarre business model. We call it spend less money than you earn. We've never raised a bunch of investment. We've never, um, uh, you know, gone out and got VC money. Um, so we basically survived all these years by making money. We don't make a lot of money because we plow all of our profits back into the product, but we've survived by making money. And so we've been trying to adopt um, best practices. And there's only one company that seems to have done a really good job in this open source space, and that is Red Hat. And Red Hat adopted this model of um, basically a subscription where you can get an ultra stable version of their main distribution. And so we adopted that model within OpenMS. So Horizon is like Fedora. All the new cool stuff's in there and all the great new features and stuff go into Horizon. Now lagging Horizon is something we call Meridian. And Meridian is an ultra tested, very, very stable version of OpenNMS. Now the main difference between Horizon and Meridian is that we charge for access to Meridian. Um, just like Red Hat. So you buy a subscription, you get access to the, the source code and the RPMs. Now you can uh, choose the same license that Horizon is published under, which is the AGPL version 3. But we also have a proprietary license, uh, which is very, very similar to the AGPL. Certain customers of ours are very large, and they don't allow any AGPL software in their uh, organizations. So we have a license that they're, they're much more happy with. But you do have the choice. Every bit of code is still published under uh, an open source license. Now, Horizon, as I said, is released about every three to four months. We do a major release of Meridian every year. And the idea is that if you're on a particular version of Meridian, um, that we'll do security updates, et cetera, for three years. So if you're running Meridian 2015, which is um, last year's version, or two years ago, it's now uh, 2017, um, that'll be supported until 20 2018 comes out. So uh, this year we'll be releasing uh, 2017, and the current release of Meridian is 2016. Um, now here is, this is totally extra credit. This is a, a general slide talking about um, the architecture of OpenMS. Now at the very center of this, you'll see this process called Event D. Um, OpenMS is a Java app, and all these sub-processes we call daemons. And so Event D is the event daemon, and it is a publish and subscribe messaging bus. So basically, processes can send events into event D, and then they can subscribe to them. They can say, hey, when something happens, let me know. Um, we have a set of daemons for monitoring. Polar D does our service polling. Collect D does our data collection. Uh, we have a provisioning system called Provision D. Um, external events, we can get SMP traps, we can get syslogs, we can get XML messages. There's uh, even a transactional language one daemon, which is for telephony interfaces. Um, automations, we have an alarm subsystem, we have notifications, we have trouble ticketing. It says basically, hey, when a particular event happens, let me tell somebody. You know, if, it's if it meets a certain set of criteria, you can send it out there. Um, we also have the OpenMS web app, which we're going to spend a lot of time in. Um, but because of that REST API that I was telling you about, um, we also have this ability of tying into the system externally. Um, do check out OpenMS Compass. It's a great little app. And again, it is totally done through the REST API. Now, OpenMS stores data in a couple of places. Um, we have configuration data, which is just in files that are stored on the file system. Um, we store a lot of information in a database. Currently, we're limited to PostgreSQL. I won't say limited. I mean, PostgreSQL is a great little database, but our goal is to make uh, OpenNMS um, database agnostic. We're not quite there yet. And for our data storage, um, we can store in round robin database format, which is similar. We actually use RRD tool. So if you've ever used Cacti or anything like that, it's very, very similar to that. But in situations where it won't scale, we also have a system called Newts. Um, Newts is built upon uh, Apache Cassandra. And it's a new time series database that is incredibly scalable and replicable, et cetera. Um, which kind of brings me to where we want to take OpenNMS. Um, a lot of people have talked about this thing called the Internet of Things, the IoT, the Internet of Things, um, where you know we're talking uh, billions of uh, uh, millions of devices and billions of metrics, um, and that's kind of where we're targeting OpenNMS right now. We're doing a lot of stuff. Uh, to position OpenMS to be a platform for the Internet of Things. Newts is a key part of it. Um, here's a graph. Um, this was at a customer up in Maryland. 
Um, as you can see here, we were recording about um, 51,000 events per second. Um, one of our guys is getting ready to do a presentation where we can do a million events per second. Uh, it depends very much on how much hardware you invest on the Newt's back end, but because of the nature of Newt's and its uh, uh, the underlying Cassandra database, you have a lot of um, a, a lot of scalability built in there. But what about gathering the information? I mean, here we have you know all these events per second, but we really need um, what if we ha you know have stuff that's geographically diverse, et cetera? We're now working on something called the Minion. That's our, our, our uh, kind of working title for it. And it's a small piece of code that can live out on a, on a remote box, maybe a Raspberry Pi, maybe uh, something like an Intel NUC. But the idea is it'll do local data collection and monitoring and then send the, just the events you're interested in back into OpenNMS. And notice that it'll work behind firewalls, it'll work if it's directly connected to the internet, et cetera. And the idea is that no matter how big a network, you can have thousands of these things. Let's say you're, you manage a hotel chain where you could put a minion in each hotel or a minion on each floor and it can monitor your door locks and your uh, mini bar and the internet connection and your set-top box, et cetera. Um, and this is ongoing work right now. Uh, a lot of it's coming out in um, uh, Horizon 19, which will be released in the next couple of weeks. Um, so that's kind of it for OpenMS. That's kind of the overall view. Um, as I said, uh, we're an application platform. And so it really starts to shine when you customize it. And we're going to spend a lot of the next modules going over how you install OpenMS and how you customize it. Again, this is 100% open source. Uh, we hope you find it useful. Um, and see you next time.